Hello, it's Martin from Vice Automotive and in this video we will be looking at our Tesla Model Y again. We've already shown you the fit and finish both of the exterior and the interior in a previous video, so I would recommend checking that out first. But now we will go a bit deeper into what Tesla has changed for the 2022 model year. I do say a model year, but Tesla does not necessarily stick to them and rolls out changes when they are ready. But with these made in China model wise, there actually has been a significant tech lift, you could say, for 2022. Just for the sake of completeness, let me very quickly run through the kind of well publicized ones. We can start right here in the front with the Matrix LED headlights. The Matrix functionality is not enabled yet and they have been on Model 3s and Model Ys for a while now. The reason why I'm mentioning them is because there have been some rumors saying that because of the chip shortage, Tesla may drop them on certain models with certain drivetrains or in certain markets like for example the US. But ours does have them. Moving to the back, the double glazing not only on the front windows but now in the rear as well. On paper this should mean slightly better refinement and important in an electric car they should have better thermal insulation properties. In terms of what we don't have, if we open the boot, at least for the UK market, there is no parcel shelf or a privacy cover to speak of. Also, this is a good opportunity to mention that, as you can see, if the car is not perfectly clean, it's not the way we would sell a car, but it's used as a daily, so just keep that in mind. And if I jump inside, the MCU3, or the third generation of the infotainment system, is indeed present, powered by the AMD Ryzen processor. There isn't that much of a difference like when jumping from MCU1 to MCU2 because the MCU2, as we all know, is already quite responsive. The updated chip just helps with the more graphically intensive tasks, like for example launching the games or browsing the web and watching YouTube. While I'm here in the infotainment, I can also say that it is running the latest version of the software and was updated just last night. So that is version 11.0, 2022.12.3. And Tesla has listened to some of the feedback from the previous versions which have gone a bit too aggressive with the minimalist design and has brought back some of the buttons like the profile selection in the top bar plus you can add back for example the heated seat controls into the dock. Okay so with the commonly discussed things out of the way let's dig a little bit deeper. Staying inside let's look at the interior camera. The initial idea was that it would be used as part of a CCTV system in case the car is self-driving. But as we have all seen, Tesla's timeline on achieving that was quite ambitious and it's still probably at least a couple of years away at best. But Tesla started repurposing the camera for driver monitoring when the car is in autopilot mode in addition to detecting torque on the steering wheel. With it being just a cheap simple camera there were obvious limitations especially in darker environments. Tesla addressed just that as part of these 2022 upgrades with infrared emitters on either side of the camera and infrared detection so even in pitch black the camera can see the driver's face and the system can evaluate whether the driver is distracted or not. It's not really possible to spot with the naked eye but if you point something like an iPhone camera at it you can really see the infrared LEDs firing away especially in dark environments. Next up we need to look at the paperwork. So I have the scanned version of the V5 on my iPad and I appreciate most people have better things to do than reading through their V5. But if you look closely at the weights, the mass in service is still 2054 kilograms. That includes 75 kilograms for the driver. So the curb weight is just under two tons. But the maximum permissible mass is 2619 kilograms. Given we haven't really had previous versions of the Model Y in the UK, we can't really compare it with cars we had previously in stock. But if we look at some of the European data, that seems like a quite significant increase in payload. From about 390 kilos, which to be honest for a five-seater SUV with a big boot was downright laughable, to about 560 kilograms, which is a significant 160 kilogram increase. The natural question which then arises is that if you have the older Model Y, can you load it up to 2.6 tons? And we would say no. Multiple reasons for that. Ignoring the legal or rather illegal implications, even though the cars may look the same on the surface, some of the structure 
and especially the brakes and the stability control system may have been retuned to account for the added payload. So the conclusion is stay on the side of caution and don't overload your car. There is a sticker in one of the doors which gives you exactly the information on how much load can be put on the front, rear axle and in total. The second interesting tidbit of information in the paperwork is the engine number. Even though we don't have an engine, this particular car is marked as 3D3, 3D7. It's split into two because with this being the all-wheel drive long-range model, the 3D3 refers to the front motor unit and 3D7 to the rear motor unit. Why is this important at all? Well, 3D3 is unchanged from the previous Model 3 and Model Y all-wheel drive versions. So it's an induction AC motor. If we look at an equivalent long-range Model 3 though, the rear unit is 3D5. 3D7 supersedes that by incorporating hairpin windings into the motors. If you are not really engineering savvy, what it means is that the cross sections of the coils in the motor are square instead of round. It's honestly quite surprising that it took Tesla this long to implement the technology given it has been relatively widespread in the industry, for example Porsche has been using in their Taycan and even some lower end cars have had hairpin windings for a while. The main advantage is that because of the rectangular cross section you can really pack the coils very closely together with very little air gap which would improve the overall torque, the efficiency and the packaging of the motor. But saying that out loud, maybe that's the reason why Tesla did not bother with it before, because those three areas are the areas which they really excel at anyways, even with the standard widings. And now that we got to the really techy stuff, it's time to put the paperwork away and start disassembling Arthur's daily car. Let's see, I didn't break any clips. This is where the HEPA filter for the bioweapons defense mode lives, but need to take that out to see what's underneath. With the air filter out, we can see the new lithium ion 12 volt battery. Now, I'm saying 12 volt for the sake of consistency, but it does seem to run a bit higher in terms of voltage than the previous battery at about 15 and a half volts. To ensure compatibility, Tesla had to replace some of the smaller components under the bonnet, like for example the windscreen washer pump. This should answer the question of whether you can upgrade the battery yourself by just getting this new lithium ion and putting it into an existing Tesla. Even ignoring the voltage differences, the unit itself is much smaller than a regular 12 volt, and I'm pretty sure the bracket and the way it's housed is different, adding yet another complication if you wanted to retrofit it yourself. This makes sense because if you look at the label, it does say that it's only about 7 amp hours, which is a fraction of the size, but you have to think about how these 12 volts are used in electric cars. And that's especially the case in these Teslas, which behave more like an iPad compared to a regular computer, where they don't really turn off properly at all, but they just go to sleep, and they keep the 4G and Bluetooth modems on, so when you approach the car, it can detect your phone, or you can still have some of the connectivity features available to you. And I suppose it's this difference compared to legacy cars which drove Tesla to change the battery. So not only are you saving size and weight with the smaller lithium-ion design, but with the car being always on, the lithium-ion chemistry is much more suitable for deeper discharge cycles, and Tesla can easily get away with a small capacity, because at any time the main traction battery can be switched on through the DC to DC converter and the 12 volt topped up as needed. There have been some reports of these batteries not playing nicely with the LFP traction batteries in the newer base versions of the Tesla Model 3, but can't really comment on that. Supposedly it was all a matter of software calibration and those issues have been fixed, and I can only say that we haven't had any issues with our Model Y. Should you need to jumpstart or wake up the car in case the 12 volt is dead. If you look at the connector on top, it looks quite a bit different compared to just standard terminals. That's because other than the positive and the ground, there is also some low voltage communication, which would help with the diagnostics and the power control right within the battery, which again should prolong the lifespan, which is one of the complaints many Tesla drivers had with their cars with the legacy lead-acid batteries, because they would usually last only about 3 or 4 years. But as I said, the terminals are integrated and covered, 
So if you need to access them with something like an external power pack, you can remove this little cover on the wiring harness and that reveals the positive terminal and you just use any metal point on the body as the ground. Other than the battery, the other quite interesting geeky thing is the three-in-one super horn. The idea is that in many countries electric cars, because they don't make any exterior sound, they need a dedicated noise generator. Tesla has been including it on their cars for a while and also uses it for some of the funnier features, such as being able to play funny sounds or the in-car audio through it as well which I guess is nice if you want to have a picnic outside with music and you don't have a Bluetooth speaker. In terms of location, it's integrated just at the bottom of the front bumper. So with that being a requirement in many countries, Tesla wants to now integrate the horn and the alarm beeper into it as well. So instead of having three components, you would just have one big digital speaker which can generate any noise you like. With this particular vehicle though, that is still not present. How do we know? Well, the speaker is definitely there, it makes the noise, but if you beep the horn, it comes from the other side of the car. And indeed, having taken out the frank assembly, there is a standard dedicated horn just underneath the left headlight. It's very difficult to show, but with there being the dedicated horn, that leads us to believe that the speaker is still of the previous generation. Whether this is because of parts availability or because of some regulatory reasons within the UK or the EU market, we don't know. And honestly, if you know any of these things, definitely let us know in the comments below. The last thing to discuss is the autopilot radar situation. So in the US, the Model 3 and the Y have been shipping without the radar sensor for a good while now. And in fact, Tesla has started doing the same thing on the S and X. It brings some short-term limitations with the maximum speed being reduced and you are required to keep a longer follow distance. This particular car being a very early 2022 build still has the radar in the front bumper, but Tesla seems to be very confident in the vision-only approach as of mid-May 2022 and all Tesla models headed to Europe will also drop the radar from now on, seemingly without any impact on the Euro and Cup crash safety rating. Great, so now you know all about the new features and you want to know whether your next car or a car you're looking at on the second-hand market comes with them. There are multiple ways of going about this and I need to make a disclaimer. With this being a Tesla, you are never 100% certain when certain changes were implemented. But in case you don't have access to the full registration documents, just the VIN number alone can be decoded for some crucial information. With Model Ys, the eighth digit refers to the drivetrain. D, E and F are the previous generation standard windings for the single motor, dual motor and dual motor performance respectively. With these newer units with the hairpin windings being labeled J, K and L following the same pattern as before. The hairpin windings should tie in with the 2022 model year in case of made in China cars. This will be probably different in the US because as of right now, Fremont is still on the previous generation motors. But just for the record, to check the model year, you need to check the 10th digit. And in this case, it's N. So as I said, it's the 2022 car. Lastly, as discussed in our previous video, the 11th digit describes where the car was produced. So in this case, C standing for Shanghai, China. If you're really, really keen on the lithium ion 12 volt battery, there isn't really a way to check whether a car comes with it through the infotainment menu. So you would have to take the frunk apart, but it seems that it always comes coupled with the Ryzen infotainment system. So if a car comes with the MCU3, you should also have the newer auxiliary battery pack. I think that's about it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or I missed any points, please drop them in the comments and see you in the next one.